In this experiment, you will use thin layer chromatography, or TLC, to analyze the components of some common over-the-counter pain relievers. The compounds that have been chosen for this analysis are acetaminophen, aspirin, caffeine, ibuprofen, and salicylamide. You will first need to chromatograph each of these compounds separately to determine their RF values under the chosen chromatographic conditions, and then analyze an unknown analgesic tablet and report its contents via correlation to the known RF values of possible constituents. Since all of the compounds under analysis are colorless, some method must be found to visualize them on the developed TLC plate. The plates will be placed under an ultraviolet lamp, and the positions and colors of the spots observed. The silica gel on these plates contain a fluorescent indicator, so the plates will have a faint glow under the UV lamp. Non-fluorescent compounds will appear as dark spots. If any of the compounds are fluorescent, which is the case for at least one of these in the experiment, its spot will glow intensely blue under the UV light. Prepare at least 12 capillary micropipettes for use in spotting the plates. The procedure for creating these will be explained during your pre-lab lecture. If you would like to wash your capillaries and reuse them, refer to your lab manual for the correct procedure. You're going to begin the lab by obtaining three plastic-backed silica gel TLC plates from the side counter. It is important to handle these plates with gloves as oil from your fingertips can mark the plates. You will be using a 16-ounce wide mouth screw cap jar for use as a development chamber. Use a half sheet of large filter paper in the chamber to help saturate the chamber with the solvent vapor. Place the paper along the side of your jar with the cut part at the base of the jar and the round part along the side of the jar. Next, pour two butanone into the jar until it reaches a depth of about 0.5 centimeters. One of your TLC plates will be used to run the separate reference compounds to determine their individual RF values. Your second plate will be used for the chromatography of a mixture of the known compounds plus the unknown. Your third plate will be used in a team exercise to test the effect of different solvents on RF. To prepare your TLC plate, begin by using a lead pencil to lightly draw a line across the width of the plate, making it at least one centimeter from the bottom. Do not disturb the silica gel coating while doing this. Next, use a centimeter ruler to mark off six spots on this line at one centimeter intervals. The first spot should be approximately 0.6 centimeters from the edge. These points will be a guide when spotting the samples. Solutions of all of the known reference compounds have already been prepared for you in the lab. There is also a solution containing a mixture of four compounds, acetaminophen, aspirin, caffeine, and salicylamide. Ibuprofen is not included in this mixture because its RF value is very close to that of salicylamide under the chromatography conditions that we use here. Obtain a few drops of the known reference solutions in labeled 10 milliliter Erlenmeyer's or beakers. Share these solutions with other students in the lab as each person only needs a very small amount. It is helpful to apply the compounds in alphabetical order to minimize the chance of confusion. Acetaminophen, aspirin, caffeine, ibuprofen, salicylamide, and finally the mixture. Use the microcapillaries that you have prepared for the application. It is important that the spots be made as small as possible. The best results are going to be obtained by applying five quick touches of solution at each spot, allowing the spot to dry thoroughly between touches. Try to keep the spots no bigger than two millimeters in diameter. If the spots are too big, or if too much sample is applied, the spots will overlap one another after development, making interpretation difficult. Once your first plate has been spotted, place it into the jar with the spotted edge at the bottom. This plate should be placed in the jar with the coated side facing away from the solvent saturation strip. Make sure that the entire bottom edge of the plate is submerged in the solvent, but the line of applied samples is above the solvent level in the bottom of the jar. Close the jar and allow the plate to develop. It is important not to move or shake the chamber while the plate is developing. Once the solvent level has risen to a level of about 0.5 centimeters from the top of the plate, remove the plate from the chamber and using a lead pencil, immediately mark the position of the solvent front. Next, allow a few minutes for the plate to dry. After your plate has dried, observe it under a short wavelength UV lamp at the station set up in the lab prep room. Lightly outline all of the observed spots with pencil. You will probably notice that aspirin and salicylamide have very similar RF values, but their appearance is different under the UV light. Make a careful note of these differences as this observation will be useful in helping you determine your analgesic components. At present, over-the-counter analgesics that contain salicylamide also always contain aspirin. 
For additional visualization, you can dip your plate in a jar containing a reactive solution and blot the excess solution with a paper towel. Notice switch spots become visible and note their relative colors. Alternatively, you may place your TLC plate in a jar containing a few iodine crystals for a few minutes. As always, record your observations in your lab notebook. Next, using a ruler marked in millimeters, you are going to measure the distance that each spot has traveled relative to the solvent front. To do so, calculate the RF value for each spot using the equation RF equals A over B, where A is the distance moved by the spot from point of application, and B is the distance moved by the solvent from the spot's point of application. All RFs should be equal to or less than one. You are now ready to prepare your unknown analgesic for analysis. Begin by placing it into a labeled 10 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. Next, add five milliliters of one to one ethyl acetate and absolute ethanol. Gently heat the mixture for at least five minutes over a hot plate in the hood. After heating the sample, allow the solution to cool and let the solid material settle at the bottom of the container. The sample is now ready for TLC analysis. Next, you will be working with your second TLC plate. This plate will ultimately contain your unknown analgesic and reference mixtures. Begin by spotting the reference mixture, which contains four of the compounds under analysis, acetaminophen, aspirin, caffeine, and salicylamide. Also spot ibuprofen, since it is not a part of the reference mixture, and the unknown solution that you have just made. The extra slots on your plate can be used to spot the unknown and reference mixtures a second time. Once your second plate has been spotted, develop it in a TLC chamber using 2-butanone as your solvent. You are going to follow the same procedure as before for visualizing the spots after chromatography and calculating the RF values of each spot. Finally, the third TLC plate will be part of a group project whose aim is to compare TLC solvents. Each member of the group should spot a separate plate with the five individual reference compounds as per plate one. The group should test the following six solvents to see the effect of polarity on the TLC results. Acetone, hexanes, methanol, ethanol, T-butyl methyl ether, and a hexanes T-butyl methyl ether mixture. After the TLC plate has developed, use the same procedure as before to visualize the spots and calculate the RF values of each.